Welcome to lesson 6.3, and I think this is the last triangle congruence theorem that we're going to be covering. I might be wrong, but I think this is the last one. And this one is interesting because all the previous triangle congruence theorems that we've gone through dealt with three uh, different things that we needed to check. Uh, we had um, angle side angle, side angle side, side side side, and angle angle side. And now we have one that just says uh, hypotenuse leg. That's what the H stands for, hypotenuse, and then leg. So um, you might. So if this is your first time taking geometry and and you know you don't remember uh, covering the Pythagorean theorem uh, extensively in algebra, or maybe you missed previous credit, or maybe it's just been a while, right? Um, you might be wondering what the heck is hypotenuse, right? So the hypotenuse is the longest side of a triangle and uh, in terms of when it's a right triangle the easy way to tell which uh, angle is a hypotenuse is is that it's the one directly across from the right angle okay so if you can identify where the right angle is if you can take a look at that little square it's the side that is across from that right angle now when we have two right triangles, what the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem says is that if you have a um, if you have a hypotenuse and a leg that is similar on both triangles, and those two triangles are um, are congruent. So. Um, yeah, so this is kind of a strange one that's a little bit different from all the previous ones. But as long as you have two right triangles and you have an hypotenuse and a, and a leg, an adjacent leg that is similar or congruent, sorry, um, then you can prove that those two triangles are congruent. So that's what explain one is all about uh, and all those theorems here. Um, let's jump into the your turn questions here. We'll look at question one first. So um, we're asked to determine whether or, or not uh, these fit the profile for um, hypotenuse leg theorem, right? So we're, we're just going to say yes or no, basically, whether or not um, it fits the bill. So this first statement here, the triangles are right triangles. Now, if we look at these two triangles, um, neither of them have that little square in the corner. So we cannot conclude that. So I'm going to say no. So right off the bat, we can't use hypotenuse leg. Um, we can say, however, that the pair of legs are congruent. That has one hash mark. Those have two hash marks, so we can say yes to that. The hypotenuses are congruent. Well, we, we, we kind of don't know, right? In this case, uh, we're not given a hash mark or anything, so we're going to say no. All right, question number two. Uh, let's take a look. So in this case, we do have um, the right angle markers here. So we can say these are right triangles. Yes. Uh, the pair of legs are congruent. So, uh, or a pair of legs. Sorry, I'm sorry. A pair of legs. So yes, those have a pair of legs that are congruent. So we're going to say yes. Um, the hypotenuses are congruent. Well, it's two separate triangles right on top of each other, and they do happen to share this, this hypotenuse right here. So we're going to say yes to that as well. So um, the example number two here in, question, uh, in your turn question number two is an excellent example of us being able to use the uh, hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem. All right. So let's, uh, you can read explain to you on your own uh, because we're going to jump into this proof here with uh, this reason bank as a reference. So we're given a we're given this diagram here with a bunch of given statements. But basically we have this bigger triangle PQS, which I'm going to shade real quick. PQS is this bigger triangle here. Um, where PO or sorry, PQ, so this side is congruent to PS and PR is perpendicular to QS, which means this creates 90 degree angles, right? So that's 90 degrees, and we're going to assume that this is 90 degrees as well. Um, so PQ being congruent to PS and PR being perpendicular to QS is going to be our given statement here. 
okay? And then angle PRQ and angle PRS are right angles. Um, how do we know that? We know that because perpendicular lines form right angles. Lines form right angles. And then triangle PQR and PSR are right angles. And so indeed, if we if we separate these two triangles, right, to triangle one and triangle two, right, those both have right angles. Therefore, they are right triangles. And that's just the definition of a right triangle. They both have right angles. So they are both right triangles of right triangle. And then PR being congruent to PR, that's just a reflexive um, statement again, reflexive property. of congruence and I didn't even check if it was up here uh, and it is reflexive property of congruence uh, we, we did that one too right um, and lastly uh, because we have a hypotenuse that we've established is the same and we've established that it's a right triangle we've established that it shares uh, that side based on the reflexive property of congruence we can conclude that those two triangles are the are, are the same or congruent because of that hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem. All right. Your turn, question number two. So we have this uh, interesting drawing of uh, triangle BD and triangle AC. Um, and two triangles right on top of each other, and it looks like they're sharing the side, by the way. But let's take a look at the given statement. CAB and DBA are right angles. So this angle right here and this angle right there are right angles because they have little tiny squares there. And uh, AD is congruent to BC, so the hypotenuses. So the side across from the right angles, hypotenuse here and hypotenuse here, uh, are the same. And um, we're going to prove that... Uh, those two triangles are the same. Now, right off the bat, I'll tell you, they have the same hypotenuse that, that's given, and we can see very clearly that this side is one that they share. They have the same hypotenuse and leg, and they're both right triangles. Therefore, uh, we can prove the hypotenuse leg triangle congruence theorem, but let's go through the proof here. CAB and DBA are right angles. Uh, that is given. Uh, AD being congruent to BC is also given right here. AB being congruent to AB, that's just a reflexive property again. Reflexive property of congruence. And then lastly, triangle ABC being congruent to triangle BAD is, is, um, oops, is that hypotenuse leg theorem that we've been working on. Triangle congruence theorem. 